The Kraft Foods Company presents The Great Gildersleeve. Yeah. It's The Great Gildersleeve, starring Harold Perry. Brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of parquet margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products. No one will ever know whether it was a night of unseasonable warm weather or a snack of milk and pickles before he went to bed or if it was the brownies themselves who disturbed his slumber. The fact remains, however, that the great Gildersleeve got up this morning feeling grumpy and we find him now sitting grumpily at the breakfast table. Gee, toast is cold. My goodness, Leroy, eat your breakfast. You're just sitting there playing with that cereal. I'm not very hungry. Well, eat it anyhow. Bertie wants to get away. I'm in no hurry, Mr. Gilsey, as long as we get downtown by 11. Oh, Bertie, as long as you're going out today, is there something in the icebox we can eat for supper this evening? Oh, yes, sir. There's some of that beef stew from yesterday if Miss Marjorie will just heat it up. Oh, I'm not going to be home for supper. You're not? Who said you're not? I'm going to a moonlight skating party with Ben. We're starting right after school. There's no moonlight at half past three. <laughs> we'll wait. Yeah. <laughs> well, it seems to me I might be consulted about these things. After all, on Bertie's day off. I told you about this a week ago, and you said it was okay. I have no recollection of it. Uh, Mr. Gilsleeve, you could warm up the stew yourself. It's just as easy as boiling an egg. I may do it if I'm in the mood. Ha! You wind up at the Summerfield Grill. With Leroy? And by the way, Leroy, it's time to go to school and you haven't eaten a thing. Now get busy. I don't know if I should go to school. I don't feel so good. I coughed a couple of times during the night, too. No, Leroy. That's right, Unky. That's right, he did. I heard him. I feel a little snuffly right now. Oh? Uh-huh. Have these symptoms by chance any connection with the problem of your homework, Leroy? What do you mean? Did you get up early and do your homework this morning as you promised to? Oh, sure, I got up. <laughs> Wasn't so very early. Uh-huh. But you prepared to talk on some current event, did you? Sure, I got it out of the morning paper. You did? What story did you select, if I may ask? The weather. You... <laughs> the weather for a current event? It was the only short one I could find. <laughs> Young man, you're not prepared. Now confess it. Oh, well, I should worry. We haven't got our regular teacher anyway. What difference does that make? Because the substitute is Miss Goodwin, and you're a good friend of hers. Leroy, you should be ashamed of yourself. Miss Goodwin is the principal of your school. Besides, if you make a stupid recitation, what will she think of me? I don't know. Told you I don't feel good anyhow. Well, you won't get out of this with any fake illness, I'll tell you that. You'll go to school like a man and face the music. Come on, Leroy, if you're coming. He's coming, all right. Mr. Gilsleeve, it's 10.30. You mind if I leave now? No, indeed, Bertie. You should have been out of here long ago. So should I. Yes, sir. Well, I'll see you tomorrow. Yes, Bertie. Have a good time. Yes, sir. Don't you starve yourself now, Miss Gilsey. Don't you? Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, I'll get it, Bertie. Yes, yes. Keep your shirt on. Hello? No, this is not 2431. It's 2413. You think people would learn to dial a number, wasting other people's time? Ha. Ah. This is 2413. Oh, hello, Bessie. Uh, yes, I'm coming down to the office. Well, I've been trying to get started, but the phone keeps ringing. I was practically out the door just now. When you all right, I'll be there, Bessie. How does she expect me to get to the office if she keeps phoning me every minute? Hi, Uncle. Hello, Leroy. Leroy, what are you doing here? Miss Goodwin sent me home. She took my temperature and said I should be in bed. You have a temperature, my boy? How much? Why didn't you tell me about it? How do I know? I told you I had a cold. Oh, my boy, forgive me. Forgive me for doubting you. Here, you get right into bed and I'll call your doctor. I don't need a doctor. It's just a little flu or something. Everybody's got it. It's an epidemic. Come on upstairs, my boy. We'll cover you up good and proper. Hot water bottle, that's what you need. Yes, sir, a hot water bottle and some orange juice. Keep drinking liquids. That's the way to beat this thing. How about a Coke? We'll see about that later. <laughs> Come on, get your clothes off now. It. Wait. Let me feel your forehead. Hmm. Miss Goodwin say how much of a temperature you had? No. You feel hot. 
Where are your pajamas, my boy? In the closet. Yes, yes. Oh, <laughs> quite a mess in here, Leroy. What the... Those are my drums. Here, yeah, yeah. get into your pajamas quickly. <laughs> Tell me, why do you keep the drums in there? Well, you won't let me play them. Not since two days after Christmas. Get into bed, my boy. And as soon as you're well, you can play the drums all you want. I can? Gee, thanks, Uncle. Uh, cover up now. You need more blankets? Heck no. I'll get you a hot water bottle. I don't need it. Oh, yes, you do. The patient never knows what's best for him. Now, you lie quietly while I get it. Wonder where the darn thing is. Should be in the medicine chest, but it isn't. Where is the hot water bottle? You know, my boy? It's hanging under the wash basin. Hanging? Oh. Hmm. Not very hot. Funny. Bertie must have used it all up washing the dishes. Well, after all, I don't want to scald the kid. <laughs> there. Yes, sir, this is going to feel mighty cozy, my boy. This will take the chill off your bones. Here. <laughs> Shove it under the covers, huh? Doesn't feel very hot. Yeah, that's because you've got a fever. <laughs> now, are you comfortable? Sure, I guess so. How about a nice tall glass of orange juice? That'd be super. Can I have some honey in it? If you want. Honey, did you say? Sure, that's the only way I like it. Well, you shall have it. Your old uncle's going to take care of you, don't worry. You know, Leroy, I may lose my temper with you once in a while, but down deep underneath, I love you very much. Why, if anything was to happen to you, my boy, I don't know what I'd do. Uh, I want you to forgive me for not believing you were ill this morning. Will you do that? Sure, that's okay. That's the boy. Now, Bertie's gone for the day, and Marjorie's not here either. But I'll just stay home from the office and show you what a good nurse I can be. After I fix your orange juice, we might play a little game of checkers. How's that sound? Super. Super, yeah. <laughs> and I'll fix your lunch after a while. Be something you like, too. Your uncle can cook a little bit if she wants to. Yes, yeah, sir. And after lunch, I'll tell you a story or read to you or we'll play games, whatever you like. Thanks, Uncle. Don't thank me. When a boy is sick, he deserves the best of everything. And that's what you're going to get. Now, you lie there and keep covered up, and I'll go down and fix your orange juice. Light bother you coming in the window? No, that's all right. Well, if it bothers you, my boy, I'll pull the shade. Now, I'll be back with the orange juice before you can say Judge Hooker. Hey, this might not be so bad. It might be worse than Leroy thinks. We'll find out very soon. Mr. Lang, about how many people spread their bread with parquet margarine? Well, judging from sales, parquet must be served daily in millions of American homes. That sounds like a lot of parquet. And a lot of homes, too. And since it's generally served three times a day in all these millions of homes, from breakfast toast to hot dinner rolls, you can get a pretty good idea of how much it takes to satisfy the whole country's taste for parquet. It sounds like a big order, Mr. Lang. Yes, it is. And with spreads of all kinds in short supply throughout the country, it's sometimes difficult to fill that huge, ever-increasing order for parquet's unmatched flavor, even though Kraft is making all the parquet it possibly can with limited supplies. I'm beginning to see now why parquet is often hard to get these days. And I'd just like to add a word of thanks to the millions of regular users of parquet margarine for being so understanding and so patient. Kraft will continue to do everything possible to keep dealers supplied in order that everyone may get a fair share. So be sure to keep asking for economical, flavor-fresh Parquet. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet Margarine. Made by the Kraft Foods Company. Now let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. Concerned about Leroy's health, he has spent a frantic half hour trying to get Dr. Pettibone on the phone. Failing to get anyone but the operator, and not getting very far with her, he has turned in his extremity to his friendly neighborhood druggist. Ah, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. 
What can I do for you? Peavy, what's good for a cold? What's good for a cold? Yes. Well, now, that's a question. Is uh, this for yourself, Mr. Gildersleeve, or for a friend? If, what difference does it make? It happens to be for Leroy. Oh, I'm sorry to hear about that. But then there are lots of colds around, a lot of them. man came in here just this morning. He had a cold. Yes, yes. And last evening, we thought for a while Mrs. Peavy was coming down with one. She complained of feeling chilly. Oh? How is Mrs. Peavy now? Oh, she's all right. It turned out the back door was open. <laughs> a lot of it around, though. Yeah, well, what I want to know is, what do you do for it? What do you take? Uh, have you tried aspirin and bicarbonate of soda? A lot of people take that. Aspirin and bicarbonate of soda? In, in a glass of water. That will uh, cure it? Well, no, I wouldn't say that. But, uh... <laughs> a lot of people take it. I'm not interested in what people take, Peavy. I want something that'll cure Leroy. Now, you've got all this stuff on your shelves here, these cold remedies and so on. What do you recommend? Mr. Gildersleeve, I'll tell you. I'm not a physician. I'm just a pharmacist, and I don't like to prescribe for people. I'm not asking you to prescribe. I'm simply asking you whether any of these so-called cold remedies of yours are any good. Are they? Uh, some of them are excellent. Will they cure a cold? I've been told that a glass of hot lemonade taken at bedtime... Will they to... cure a cold? Mr. Gildersleeve, why don't you call in a doctor? If I tried to. These darn doctors, you never can get them when you need them. And I must say, you're not much better. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Well, you're not, Peavy. I come in here, my little nephew's lying ill at home. You've got the stuff right on the shelves there, and you won't recommend anything. I'm merely trying to be ethical, Mr. Ethical? I ask you if something's any good. Well, now, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> that isn't being ethical, Peavy. That's being shifty. Well, now, I... Don't say it! <laughs> for the last time, let me ask you. Haven't you got one single thing in this entire store that you can recommend for a cold? Yes, I have. In fact, I use it myself. So does Mrs. Peavy. Well, come on, man. What is it? Mm -hmm. Kleenex. Oh, goodbye. <laughs> mm. Sounds awfully quiet up there. Wonder if the little fellow's asleep. Well, I hope so. Sleep is the best medicine, they say. Well, I'll tiptoe up in a few minutes. What the... Leroy! If that kid's out of bed... Leroy! Oh, hi, Unc. Guess I must have dropped off to sleep for a minute. Uh, I think I feel a little better now after my nap. Leroy, were you out of bed? Out of bed? Me? When I entered this house, I heard the sound of running feet up here. They were either those of a small boy or a very large rat. <laughs> That's funny. I didn't hear anything. We won't pursue the matter any further at this time, my boy. But hereafter, no getting out of bed, understand? Well, I wouldn't think if of... If you need anything or if you want anything, just call me. I'll get it for you, understand? Gee, you're super, Unc. You're a super uncle. Uh, yes, yes. Now, remember, if you want anything, just call me. I'll be down in my study. Okay. Try and get a little sleep, my boy. It'll do you good. Hey, Unc! Yes, Leroy, what is it? Could I have a Coke, Unc? I think I'd feel better if I had a Coke. Well, I don't know what the doctor would say. Coke is liquid, Unc, and liquids are important. Well, the heck with the doctor. He isn't on the job anyway. It would serve him good and right if I gave you the wrong thing. Gosh, Unc, you're so good to me. Yes, yes. Keep covered up now. Hey, Unc! Oh, nuts. Yes, Leroy, what is it now? Well, you come up, bring the funnies, will you? And some scissors. And some paste. <laughs> oh, well, have to humor him, I guess. Oh, 
what? What you doing? I'm just sitting here. Where? On the stairs. What doing? Trying to get my breath. Bertie would have to be off today, confound it. Honk. What? I'm hungry. I just gave you lunch. Yeah, canned soup and prune juice. <laughs> You're lucky to get it. <laughs> Honk. Now what? I'm lonesome. He's lonesome. <laughs> well, I'm tired. Zoof. <laughs> I've been up these stairs 50 times today if I've been up them once. And you tell me you're lonesome. Well, there's nothing to do. How can you say that, my boy? I brought you funny papers. I brought you games. I brought you books. I get you a jigsaw puzzle off the top shelf in the sewing room closet and nearly broke my neck. Look at it all over the floor. And all these little scraps of paper. Look at your bed. What do you do to it? I don't do anything. Looks like a weasel's nest. <laughs> Just gets tangled up. Well, straighten it out. Here. What was that? My pistol and my baseball bat. What are they doing in your bed? I don't know. Confound it. Lie down, Leroy. Straighten out. Pull down your pajama top. Pull up your covers. Act sensible. God. You're not here to be entertained, young man. You're here to get well. What are you looking at me like that for? All right, Leroy. I'm sorry. What would you like me to do? Would you like me to read to you? Huh? If you want to. Well, I don't want exactly. I have to do other things downstairs. Just offer to do it if you'd, you'd think it would amuse you. Now, here's a nice book. The Wind in the Willows. Yeah, a Christmas book, evidently. How about it? Would you like me to read that? If you want to. I just told you I don't want to at all. I'm doing this for your sake. I know what would amuse me, Unc, if I could listen to the radio. I'm offering, Leroy, to read you The Wind in the Willows. Do you want me to or do you not? Well, I looked at the first chapter, Unc. It doesn't look so hot. But if you could bring up the radio... Lug the radio clear up here, that great big thing? You let Marge have it when she was sick. All right, I'll bring up the radio, ye gods. It's a dinger. Well. Zoof. Oink. <laughs> there. Radio. Gosh, Unc, you're a super. I'm a sucker. <laughs> Go ahead now and amuse yourself. No, let me hear you another peep out of you. Like... Wait, you haven't plugged it in. Oh? Where's the socket? Under the bed. Oh, for <laughs> Here, give me the plug up. Stay under the covers. I'll do it. You'll never make it that way, Unc. You have to get down on your stomach and slide under. It's the only way. <laughs> well, if I have to. I fit. <laughs> You better let me. You better let me. Oh, stop bouncing up and down up there. <laughs> Sorry. Leroy, conditions under your bed here in an absolute disgrace. <laughs> <laughs> Simply filthy. Old shoes. Comic books. Yay! Oh, <laughs> what's wrong? It's all right. It's just a bird's nest. <laughs> I thought it was something else. <laughs> Will you tell me what a bird's nest is doing down here? Must have got lost. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, there. You coming out, Aunt? If I can get out. Can I turn it on now? Did you plug it in? If you want to. Unc, look at your suit. Don't tell me to look at it. Look at it yourself. Just look at it. Dust all over it. That's what happens if you crawl around on the 
floor. Leroy, the very minute you're well, I want you to get under there with a pick and shovel and clean that place out. <laughs> you understand? Not Bertie, you. What? Oh, the radio. It is five days now since Dwight Finchley returned to Sable Groves. But he has not yet learned that June Trunyon is no longer engaged to marry Crest Barry. Oh, for heaven's sake. As for June, her new interest in helping Dale Thurman regain his talent for drawing has made her an entirely different girl. Leroy? But I like it. But as Dale fights slowly back to life and hope, Bar Kramer and Aunt Millicent see a threat to their hold over Edge Bindle and the Bindle fortune. Poppycock. Yeah. Perhaps this is why we find Edge talking to old Dr. Clockmaster in the doctor's office this morning behind closed doors. Now go on with the story of Gladys Walmrath. Leroy, I won't have you listening to this kind of bill. Oh, I like it. You don't have to listen. No, neither do you. By George, there ought to be a law. Oh, that's mean. It's not mean. It's for your own good. Now stop whining or I'll take... What's that? Doorbell sounds like. You stay here and don't turn on that radio. All right. Eve Goodwin. I've been ringing for the longest time, Throckmorton. Come on in, Eve. Come on in. I knew there must be someone at home, so I just kept ringing. I'm sorry. Leroy and I are upstairs listening to the radio. I don't usually listen to it myself, of course. Horrible stuff. But you know how it is. When the kiddies are sick, it's hard to deny them anything. <laughs> Let me take your things, Eve. Uh, how is Leroy Throckmorton? I worried about him after I sent him home. I could see he wasn't himself this morning. He's certainly been himself this afternoon. Oh, I'm so glad. I, I thought I'd just stop in and inquire and bring him these school books in case he wants to brush up. Well, that's very thoughtful of you, Eve. I, uh, I wonder if it'd be all right if I went up and spoke to him for a moment. That is, if he's not asleep. Certainly. I don't know what he's up to by now, but I can guarantee he's not asleep. <laughs> After you, Eve, go ahead. Children are so active, aren't they, when they're sick? You may say that again. Unless, of course, they're really sick. And then they're so pitiful. Oh, uh, Leroy! Someone to see you, my boy. This way, back here. Oh. That's his room. Go right in. Go right in, Eve. Oh, I'm afraid he is asleep, Throckmorton. See, his eyes are closed. What the... Let's not disturb him, please. Just a minute. Uh, 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 Leroy? Hello, Uncle Mort. <laughs> what is this? Hope we didn't wake you, my boy. Here's Miss Goodwin to see you. Hello, Miss Goodwin. Hello, Leroy. How are you feeling tonight? A little better, I guess. Thank you. Oh, really, Throckmorton, he seems terribly weak. Have you had the doctor? Don't worry, Eve. I think you'll pull through. I brought you a few school books, Leroy, in case you should feel strong enough to want to keep up with what the class is doing. Gee, thanks, Miss Goodwin. I don't know if I feel strong enough, but thanks a million, just the same. Gosh, I've been so worried about my schoolwork. <laughs> Being out a whole day like this, I worried all day. Yes, yes. Now, don't you worry. You'll make it up, Leroy. Why, well, sure. You'll be back in school by day after tomorrow, or I'll know the reason why. <laughs> Unc just says that to cheer me up. He's so good to me, Unc is. He lets me listen to the radio and everything. Don't you, Unc? Uh, yes, <laughs> Yes, Leroy and I have had quite a day together, haven't we, my boy? Quite a day. I sometimes think we never really get to know our children till they're ill, and we have a chance to spend a little time with them. Oh, that's so true. <laughs> Why, some days I scarcely see Leroy from dawn to dewy eve. That's one reason I was glad to cancel all my business engagements for the day and just spend it here, tending to the little fellow's needs. Sure you're comfortable, my boy? Yes, thank you, Uncle Moore. As comfortable as I can be. If, uh, you sure there's nothing I can get you? Another pillow? No, thank you. I wouldn't want to be a bother. Oh, no bother. <laughs> Gracious. Here, let me plump this one up a little for you. There. Comfy now? Mm-hmm. Unky. Yes, my boy? Lay your hand on my forehead. Feel so nice and cool. Uh, there, there, my boy. You know, Throckmorton, seeing you and Leroy together like this, it, 
Well, uh, there's something so touching about a man alone with a child. His clumsy tenderness, his, his efforts to do the little things a mother would do. It makes a woman want to help. Mm. <laughs> Yes, Doc Morton. Let's go downstairs and talk. <laughs> All right, let's. Oh, don't leave me. <laughs> now, Leroy, say good night to Miss Goodwin. Good night, Leroy. Don't go, Miss Goodwin, please. Gosh, all day long I've been wishing somebody would come and read The Wind in the Willows to me. <laughs> Leroy. I'd love to read it to you some other time, Leroy. But right now, I think your uncle knows best. She's right, my boy. But I get lonesome all alone up here. I, I get scared of the dark. Gosh, that's nonsense, and you know it. Well, I'm sick. <laughs> uh, Eve, I think you'd better go ahead downstairs. Oh, certainly, Doc Morton. I'll hear the boys' prayers, and I'll be right down. <laughs> good night, Leroy. Say good night to Miss Goodwin. Good night, Miss Goodwin. Sleep tight and get well soon, Leroy. Yes, yes. Now, you little rascal, you listen to me. You're no more sick than I am. I am, too. Well, you're certainly not as sick as you're letting on. Nobody's that sick. <laughs> Look, Leroy, I've spent the whole day with you up here. I've played games with you, and I've fed you, and I've waited on your hand and foot. Now, have a heart. What do you want me to do? Let me go downstairs and entertain Miss Goodwin. How are you going to entertain her, Uncle? <laughs> with my sparkling conversation. How do you think? Here, you better take along the wind in the willows. <laughs> Leroy, by George, you're all right. When you're as old as I am, I'll do the same for you. What a character. The great Gildersleeve will be back in a few moments. The other day, a friend of my wife's remarked that her food store didn't seem to be getting parquet margarine anymore. Now, I know that Kraft is making every effort to see that each food dealer is getting his fair share of all the parquet that's being made. So I made it a point to ask Kraft about it. And what they told me helped to set this friend of ours straight. They said that Kraft is actually making more parquet margarine than they did before the war. But here is what's happening. With the increasing demand for parquet and quantities definitely limited, what used to be a normal supply for a dealer may be sold out in a single day or even a few hours. That will explain to those millions who prefer parquet margarine for its fresh, delicate flavor why you can't always get it in your favorite food store during this temporary shortage. <laughs> Are you still listening to that radio? Sure. Oh, well. The Kraft Foods Company presents The Great Gildersleeve. Yeah. Oh, no, not that. Go to bed, Leroy. Good night, everybody. The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. It is written by John Whedon and Sam Moore. The music is by Jack Meekham. This is John Lang speaking for the Kraft Foods Company and inviting you to listen in again next week for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. What's that jar of golden flavor goodness families often reach for when foods taste kind of flat? Why, it's mustard, of course. And when it's Kraft salad mustard, you can be sure it has just the right tangy flavor that's needed to pep up frankfurters, sandwich spreads, potato salad, and many other favorite foods. So stock up tomorrow on light, golden, creamy, smooth Kraft salad mustard. And for flavor variety, also be sure to pick up a jar of Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Buy both of these delicious Kraft mustards the next time you shop. This is NBC, the national broadcast.